hey guys, what's up? So today I'm going to be reviewing a product that many of you have requested both here and on Facebook and on my Instagram account for me to review. And that is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream. I'm thrilled to see that they have made this available in a fragrance-free formulation. Um, those of you who have seen some of my other reviews of some of the other Neutrogena Hydro Boost products, you know that uh, I'm a real stickler for the fragrance that they put in, a, in probably 95% of the Hydro Boost line. It is not only problematic from my perspective, but the fragrance itself is terrible. So I was thrilled to see they came out with this and they came out with one that was free of that fragrance. Um, but before we get into the review of this product, I want to touch on some key features of moisturizers that I think are important for you um, as consumers and users to wrap your head around uh, to better guide you in selecting moisturizers and to understand how this moisturizer and other moisturizers in the Hydro Boost line and similar products to it function in your skincare routine and how to get, how to get the most out of them and where they're useful. So I've made videos in this vein before, but I think it's worth revisiting. The key properties of a moisturizer kind of fall under three categories of ingredients, which should be present for effective moisturizers. And those include, first of all, occlusive ingredients. Occlusive ingredients are really a strong workhorse in your moisturizer. And the more occlusive the moisturizer is, the better it is at actually repairing dry, cracked skin, the better it is at preventing water loss from the skin, and overall, it is a better moisturizer. Um, occlusive ingredients form a watertight seal on both the top layer of the skin as well as between the skin spaces or the interstitium, preventing what's called transepidermal water loss. These ingredients include things like petrolatum, mineral oil, lanolin, paraffin, squalene, and um, various silicone derivatives. And I have an entire video on silicones and dimethicone, so make sure you check that out if you have questions. But in short, these are all great ingredients um, and are actually not pore clogging, despite a lot of the phobia around them. And they make for wonderful occlus occlusives in your moisturizers for preventing that transepidermal water loss. However, because they are occlusive, they do leave a greasy feeling behind on the skin. That is often the result of mineral oil in the product. People with acne prone skin don't care for this. And therefore, a lot of the quote oil free moisturizers that you will see out there are free of mineral oil, but that is not necessarily because mineral oil is bad for acne. It is more of an aesthetic property of the moisturizer itself. Dimethicone, as an occlusive, however, is uh, very good at preventing transepidermal water loss, and it does not. It is one of the few occlusives to, that does not leave that greasy feeling, and therefore is frequently present in a lot of your oil-free moisturizers. The second ingredient that is important is in the category of humectants. Humectants function to attract water from actually the deeper layers of the skin up into the top layer of the skin, the epidermis, and the very top of the epidermis, the stratum corneum. They function to draw water there and hold it there so as to rehydrate and plump up the skin. And this is really important. When the skin barrier is impaired, we have dry skin, that dry, dull appearance is the result of the top layer of the skin being very, very water poor. As we mature, as time goes on, we uh, become less, less adept at keeping that top layer hydrated and therefore we really need good humectants in our moisturizers to kind of plump up the skin a little bit better. Humectants inc include ingredients like glycerin or glycerol, sodium hyaluronate, which is also hyaluronic acid, um, ammonium lactate, sorbitol, urea, and your alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid and, and um, lactic acid, uh, mandelic acid, um, as well as sodium lactate. Now, 
Humectants are, while they're really wonderful at pulling water up out of the, the deeper layers of the skin and, and, and plumping up the top layer of the skin, if you use an exclusive hum, exclusively humectants, if, if a moisturizer contained exclusively humectants, actually this can worsen dryness, okay? Um, because what, what's happening here is that that humectant is really functioning to draw water up out of the deeper layers of the skin to plump up the skin. But if you don't seal it in, you're going to continue to lose water out of the top. Um, and therefore, the fact that it is pulling, that the humectant is actually helping to pull water out of the deeper layers of the skin, but you're not sealing it, sealing it on there, um, you can actually get worsening dryness. Glycerin, for example, is probably the best humectant. If you just put glycerin on your face, A, it's very sticky and tacky and not, not easy to tolerate. But if you just put straight glycerin on your face, um, this actually can increase transepidermal water loss up to, up to 26%. So it by itself is not a good moisturizer. The third category of ingredients in the moisturizers are emollients. Emollients, largely, by and large, the way they function is really to just soften the um, skin cells on the top layer of the skin, smooth out the edges. They function to just kind of place a little drop of oil in the spaces in between. But their properties and their outcome is largely illusory in that they really do not mechanistically moisturize the skin. They largely just kind of create a shine to the skin, but uh, that kind of imparts a hydrated, dewy glow, a luminosity. But like I said, it's illusory. There is not a mechanistic um, hydration in place there, and you will continue to lose water from the skin if all you're doing is using, is using oils, uh, for example. Oils are classic emollients, um, things like um, sunflower oil, castor oil, aragon oil, all of the different oils that people are always excited about. Using those by themselves really, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't do anything but kind of give you a little transient glow. So those are the key ingredients of a moisturizer and pretty much any moisturizer out there will have some mix of these three components. However, um, having all three components doesn't really tell you how good of a moisturizer it is, how well it's going to, how well it's going to function at sealing in transepidermal water loss and plumping up the skin. Just because it has those ingredients in there really doesn't tell you a whole lot. The best way, actually, the most objective way to know that would really to be would really be to do objective studies measuring transepidermal water loss in the skin, and you can't do that at home. Um, you can kind of cheat and look at the consistency, all right? That's that's usually usually a good way to understand. Things that, that leave a, a nice thick film on the top layer of the skin, that, you know, a nice barrier, those are obviously more occlusive. Whereas watery things, things that are often marketed as serums, those are really lightweight lotions and they, they have more humectant properties and less occlusive moisturizing properties. Getting into Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream, this is largely humectant based and that uh, the first ingredient is water and then the second ingredient is glycerin. So you can see it's running down my finger here and then when I apply this to the skin, it is it feels really watery. I mean, it feels really watery. In addition, to, in addition to the water and the glycerin, <laughs> this also has sodium hyaluronate, which is the hyaluronic acid. So really good ingredients, but by itself, this is not occlusive at all. If you put this on dry skin as a moisturizer, if you put this on wet skin, like I advocate, the soak and smear technique, if you're confused by that, see my how to moisturize your body and how to moisturize your face videos. But if you just put this on wet or dry skin, what's going to happen is it's not sufficiently occlusive. So you're going to have ongoing transepidermal water loss. And what you're left with is kind of a sticky residua on your skin. Where, where you have this. It feels sticky, tacky, and it doesn't really moisturize particularly well. Therefore, the way to use this is to put it on your skin, ideally when you first step out of the shower and your skin is still wet, uh, to really kind of you know, get the most out of the humectant property and, and plumping up the skin and immediately to seal that, um, seal that with something heavier like 
um, a moisturizing body cream. You know the ones that I like. CeraVe in the, in the tub, Vanny Cream, Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream. I'll list some down below. That is how to use this effectively as a body moisturizer. Um, it, it, it really isn't a good body moisturizer. And having used it for quite some time now and tried it out, I have to say, as a, in moisturizing the body and using it under moisturizers, I don't find that this really brings a whole lot to your body moisturizing routine. Putting this on underneath your moisturizer gives you modest improvement in kind of skin plumpness and hydration. I don't see a substantial leap in total body hydration in comparison to when I just use an occlusive moisturizing cream uh, by itself. This, this by itself is, is not a good moisturizer, but this combined with a moisturizing cream doesn't bring a whole lot to the table. Where this product shines is taking it up to the face, okay? With your face facial skin moisturizing routine. People have asked me to compare this to the Neutrogena Hydro Boost gel cream. I'll touch on that in a minute. But many questions that I get from you regard are with regards to if and how to use this on the face. Yes, this can be used on the face. And um, by itself, again, is not going to be an effective facial moisturizer. But where you will find that this does, does amp up your facial moisturizing routine and is it in a cost-effective manner is, again, when you cleanse your face, your skin is still wet ideally, to smear this on right away as soon as you, as soon as you rinse the skin um, to, to really maximize, maximize that humectant property and then to seal it on with an appropriately occlusive moisturizing, moisturizing cream. If you wanna to stick to Neutrogena products, you know, you can use their Neutrogena um, uh, Sensitive Skin uh, Facial Moisturizer that they have, which is fragrance-free and wonderful. I'll list it down below. Uh, personally, I just use the same moisturizing cream that I use in my body to my face, and that's CeraVe. Um, but you know, you can use, a ver a, there are a variety of excellent facial moisturizers out there that could be used over this, and will really get you, get you some extra hydration in your, in your, on your face. Um, this is really affordable. It's like 10 bucks, uh, whereas the other products in the line are a lot more expensive. Another product that you may be interested in trying and I would discourage you from pursuing is the Hydro Boost Facial Serum. The Hydro Boost Facial Serum um, is a little bit thicker than this, but has that god awful fragrance in it. This will, will get you a similar outcome in boosting your moisturizer without having to, to use that that product that has a fragrance in it. You may be using a, another, another serum for kind of added hydration. Try this out. Serum to me is really just kind of a watery humectant based moisturizer. Um, and I think that's what they've created here. They've created something that for those of you who like who like that little extra extra layer of humectant that's that's kind of more watery, I think you will enjoy this to the face under your moisturizer. Now, the follow-up question to that is, is this a substitute for my other favorite product in the Neutrogena Hydro Boost line? And that is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream, the Extra Dry Skin Formulation. This one is fragrance-free, all right? So make sure, make sure it's the Extra Dry Skin one that's fragrance-free. This is not comparable to the lotion. This is much thicker. All right, I'll, I'll just show you it for comparison's sake here. This is, this is much thicker. Um, and first of all, this is a much thicker product. Um, it, it is more of a actual occlusive cream consistency. By itself, not occlusive enough to be used as a standalone moisturizer. Um, the first time I used this, actually, I tried using it as a standalone moisturizer and it was awful. What sets this apart from the body cream is that, A, this is a little bit more occlusive, although not sufficiently occlusive to be used by itself as a moisturizer. You still need something on top. Um, this, is, this is thicker. And this also has um, poly, polyacrylamides in it, acrylamides, and therefore it has a nice refractile property, which for those of you with fine lines, wrinkles, that you are aiming to plump up and improve the appearance of, this offers you something that the watery body lotion does not, in that not only does it have the humectant property in it to keep 
the stratum corneum, the top layer of the skin, more hydrated and uh, and make the skin, you know, help with that that kind of dull dull appearance of the skin. But it also will plump up uh, those fine wrinkles, fine lines. So this is wonderful, kind of for areas on the face in particular. I mean, I don't really think we have spot areas on the body necessarily that we're trying to plump up, but maybe you do. Spot areas on the face, like around your eyes. That's a classic area. Periorbital wrinkles. This is great as a spot hydration treatment there. It's going to increase hydration in the skin. It's going to plump it up. It's going to diminish the appearance of those fine wrinkles, fine lines. And the acrylamides in this nicely scatter light. They really brighten up the, the skin around the eyes in a way that the body lotion does not. This is, however, more expensive, but that is, that is what sets it apart. And that is, that is how this can be used, whereas the body lotion, the body lotion doesn't have that density of acrylamides in it that this does and does not scatter light to the same degree and is less impressive as a kind of illusory brightener than this is. Really, because of its formulation, can nicely reflect and scatter light and really, really improve the appearance of those fine wrinkles and lines and smooth down the surface of the skin with the emollient properties in this, um, as well as bring hydration into the skin in a non-irritating manner. So I, I recommend this uh, still. It is not it is not the, the body lotion is not a substitute for this. You can use the body lotion on the face, um, but this, this has some, some unique properties that set it apart from the body lotion, as I, just, as I just discussed. So yeah, that's my review of the Hydro Boost body lotion. I'm glad they came out with another fragrance-free product. Um, you know, be really careful with Neutrogena. They put fragrance in a lot of things and they're sneaky about it. A lot of their sunscreens will sneak fragrance into the products, uh, but they, they do make really good skincare products, particularly those without fragrance. I have always been really happy. I've been a long time user of Neutrogena long before I was in medicine, dermatology, long before I even went to medical school, I use Neutrogena products. So I have a long-standing history of feeling, you know, being very happy with them. But I, I, got, I have to say, the, the fragrance is, is a downer. <laughs> but I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.